Several months ago, I had a little project that the, the client wanted some modifications done on some data that was originally done in a different CAD system. And uh, I ended up doing it in NX because it, quite frankly, it was very easy. And the way I ended up doing it was I went into, actually, I'm coming here. I went in and I extracted that face and that face. Now, obviously, this isn't the project. I'm just, I mimicked something to mess with. Let me hide the initial body. So I have those two faces. The next thing I did was I went into um, untrim, pick my surface, hide the original, associate it was fine, pick my surface, and I did my untrim. Nice thing about that is it took me right back to the initial theoreticals. Now this is where it gets interesting. I went in and extracted this theoretical. Okay, so I did my composite curve. I doesn't matter what you do. I'll just turn off advanced curve fit, select okay. Once I had my curve, I went into the modification of said curve using X form. Now, when you do this, it's going to come back and give you this, hey, this re operation removes parameters from the curve feature. Do you want to continue? And I said, yeah, that's totally fine. I don't care about the parameters of that curve, right? I just extracted it. I'm changing what the theoretical needs to look like. So I just needed to get back to the original. And this is how I did it. Now that I have my extracted curve, converted to an X form, I can begin making those modifications that I need to to the shape. So I'll just do some little modifications here. I'll make that normal, I'll pull that up. I'll even pull this out up and this one. And then let's go like this, modify it in a vector. This guy and pull that in a little bit, pull that in, pull this one out, maybe pull that in a little bit. So there is my new theoretical. Now with that, I need to take these surfaces and manipulate them so they meet the new theoretical. Let me go ahead and change the color of this, make it a little bit easier hopefully to see, a little thicker, there we go. All right, now, this is where I went into and did a match edge. So I'm taking those untrimmed surfaces. Look, I have the running history here. This is kind of nice. I want to pick this surface near this edge. Where do I want this to go to? I want this to go over to here. And before, after. So it's giving me my continuities, telling me all this stuff. So this tool, this match edge is really incredible, super easy to use. Okay, I'll do a separate video on this later on, but for now, just showing you what I ended up doing. So I matched to that curve and apply. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I want to match this edge to this curve. Now, when I did that, what ended up happening is it matched it, but it is no longer symmetrical about the center plane. And to prove that, I'm just going to go into information, control I. Actually, let me pick the face. So I'm going to wait until I get my uh, quick pick. And I want to actually pick the face. And I've talked about this in another video how I can analyze to figure out whether or not I am symmetrical. And this gives me a normal based off of my absolute. And this normal vector, as you can see, is off. In one of those vectors, it should be 0, 0, 0 all the way across. And since it's off in all three of those, I know that it is not balanced. So that means I have to come in here and balance this out. Now, when I look at the match edge, you'll see that I've got um, edge constraints and tolerances 
and I have this opposite edge constraint, free, G1, G0. So this is just what does the opposite end do? It may have to manipulate or modify that opposite edge. So this isn't constraining the opposite edge per se, is it is saying or allowing it to move. It's just saying that, okay, do you want it there? Do you want the rule of control points anchored down where they are at? Not to say be symmetrical to the other side. If I go to shape control, right, I can edit my poles. I have tangent directions, shape modification, up, up opposite edge constraint. Again, just free. There's no make the opposite edge symmetrical. Unless I'm missing something, I have never seen it. But it's a pretty easy fix because I can just go into X form now, pick this surface, edit symmetrically. What's my symmetry plane? This is my symmetry plane. Now I want to make sure that my arrow is pointing towards the side, the side that has my match edge. If it's reversed, you'll see that it wants to go back to the other side. It's pretty obvious. Okay, so this is pointing out to that side. I'm saying keep this side and manipulate that side across my center plane. Now, when I go in there and do my information, get the face, zeros. So this is perfectly balanced across that that plane so now I know this is this is good I can go now and show the original body and have a look and show okay this is where it's been modified and again if I need to make modifications to this if I go to this spline and I double click on it even though it doesn't show up with history down here it's still a spline now because it's no longer a extracted curve Right? Remember, I initially used a composite. It's no longer extracted. I converted it to a standard spline without any history. But I double click on it. It brings back those control points. I'm going to turn on single segment. And then I'll just say normal. And this now allows me to make modifications. Okay, now the reason why I'm not seeing the modification happen as I'm making the change, I never went into preferences, I never went into modeling, and dynamic update, I'll just say continuous, I'll just say all levels. So now if I wanna see that continuous modification, I can see that continuous modification. Select OK. If I look at my X form, okay, symmetry plane is still there, right? I can again make modifications to this if I need to. So now I have full control over those base surfaces, using them as a reference to extract out, getting back to the as you can see, the shape that I needed, I needed that theoretical curve. I could have drawn in a new theoretical curve, but, you know, I'm a designer, so I want to do things as efficiently as possible, right? I don't want to be too lazy. I don't want to be too lethargic. And uh, that allows you to get to that theoretical curve really quickly and be able to make those modifications. And to finish this off, you can go in there and do some sort of a face blend or whatever, pipe it in, draw the curves, whatever you want to do to get that blend and uh, I use this method in several places on that model that was I think it was originally done in alias to be uh, to be quite frank and uh, I basically ended up reparameterizing those surfaces well some of them the areas that needed those modifications with this method it worked great it worked really really well